good now. Oh, hello. Welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend Bradley, and today is a very pleasant Sunday Stuff and Things. And on this Sunday Stuff and Things, we have stuff and things to talk about, including upcoming videos, things that you can look forward to on Stuff and Things and working. We're going to sample... I'm not looking forward to this. I'm not looking forward to this at all, but we're going to sample a product that is kind of ubiquitous, or maybe it was ubiquitous back in the day. It's something everyone knows about, but I'm not sure that many people have actually had. We'll get into this, though. It's it's going to be weird. I'm assuming it's going to be gross, but I'm assuming it'll also be entertaining for you to watch. And then, of course, we have your questions, comments, and feedback. Lots of good feedback in hashtag ask stuff and things. So let's get into it. It's going to be gross. All right, what can you look forward to on Stuff and Things and working? First, we are going to have the first impressions video for Capstan Gold Navy Cut. A blend that is kind of weird that I haven't done this yet. I did blue years ago. I wish I had had a tin of Capstan blue more recently to compare it to the gold, but I think I have a pretty good idea of what blue was like. So anyway, Capstan Gold first impressions video will be coming up this week. We will be unboxing my custom pair of NYX Pullman Engineer boots the week after that. And then the week after that, we will do the full review for Capstan Gold Navy Cut. Working has episode 22 out right now. That is stripping a large foundation. You should definitely check that out. Definitely very interesting. There will be an episode, not this, a new episode, not this week, but the week after. I'll be getting into that when we're closer to when that episode comes out, but lots of good stuff on working. Please check it out if you haven't already. And then I want to remind you, I renounced it. I said that really strangely. I announced it last week and lots of you uh, followed my new Insta Instagram account, but if you haven't already, it is Bradley A. Victor, at Bradley A. Victor on Instagram. And it is my completely photo centered Instagram account where I will be posting pictures that I take with the various cameras that I have. I have several now. Just got a new film camera for my birthday, the Nikon FE. So I will be posting some film pictures on there soon once I start getting some rolls back. I love this thing so much. Just I, There's no film in it now so I can actually play with it, which is fun. Just he hear that. Ah, so satisfying. Love this thing. But anyway, you should check out that video too that posted last week where I walk you through this new camera. Anyway, lots of good stuff coming up on all the channels. Please check it out. So generally throughout the week, after I've done last week's Sunday stuff and things, I will be living my life, experiencing things, going through the motions of being a human being on this earth. And typically things occur to me that I write down in my notebook, things that I can talk to you about in the next Sunday Stuff and Things. Sometimes the main topic of the episode will be inspired by a question or a piece of feedback that I got on YouTube or Patreon. Sometimes a particularly memorable, memorable event will have happened to me throughout the week and I will recount that or some item about the pipe hobby will occur to me and I will talk to you about that. This week, nothing happened. <laughs> and I couldn't think of anything super interesting to talk about. And obviously I could, I'm sure I could come up with something. I did actually get in a little fender bender accident. Somebody backed into me when I was waiting for a ferry, but it was just kind of nothing. Nothing really happened. Um, they accepted liability. I got money for the accident and it's all fine. No big deal. Everyone was nice and friendly and apologetic for doing what had happened for, for the accident that had happened. So, it occurred to me, like, I don't know, I was thinking today, what am I going to talk about this week? And I started going through some of the questions and some of the feedback and stuff, and there was nothing that really leapt out at me. Maybe it's just my mood today, I'm not sure. But I went to the grocery store, and I was as I was browsing around, I saw a product that I've never tried in my entire life. It has never passed my lips. And I thought, I, I, I want to try that. I want to see what that is like. I'm assuming it's gross. And then as I was having that thought, it occurred to me, oh, I should do this on the channel. This is not a, a reacts channel. I don't eat snacks and react to, them, react to them, at least not often. But I just thought maybe it would be fun for me to try. 
A piece of old Americana, something that I'm sure most of you have heard of but probably haven't had. And I bought a can of Spam. I don't really know what this is. I mean, I know it's a meat-based product of some sort. Let me see, what does it say here? Uh, ingredients. Pork with ham. Salt. Water. <laughs> modified potato starch. Sugar. And sodium nitrate. So is that what SPAM stands for? Salt, pork, and ham? So SPAM, salt, pork, ham? I don't know. I know that uh, for some reason in Hawaii, Spam is very popular. There are actually dishes in local Hawaiian cuisine that are centered around Spam. I know that some people, you know, cut it up and fry it as a, a meat option in their breakfast if they're doing like an American style breakfast. I've never tasted it in my life. I'm assuming it's going to be disgusting and I just thought it would be fun. I'm not gonna do anything to prepare it. It says here, uh, a tasty twist, blah, blah, blah. It said something here. Oh, on the back it says, sizzle pork and ham. Are they trying to claim that that is what SPAM stands for? Sizzle pork and ham? I don't believe that for a moment. Seven grams of protein. Um, package, but ba do. It's a lot of salt in this. There is 33% uh, of your daily allowance of sodium. 13% of cholesterol. 30% uh, saturated fat of your saturated fat for the day, for the day, 21% of total fat, no carbs, no fiber, 2% uh, of your daily allowance of sugars, 14% of your sodium. I think it said somewhere that this is, okay, fully cooked, ready to eat, cold or not. Slice Spam Classic and heat as suggested to fry. Or no, to fry, fry slices in uh, skillet until golden brown on both sides. To bake, place slices on baking pan. Bake it at 425 degrees for 10 minutes. We're not going to do any of that. We're just going to crack the top of this tin. I'm going to take this fork and I'm going to taste the Spam. Maybe I'll like it. Maybe this is going to be the beginning of a brand new beautiful relationship. Here's the top here. I'm going to crack this thing open. That was not a very <laughs> confidence-inspiring sound there. Very mushy. This is not going to like spill liquid everywhere, is it? Is it wet meat? Okay, I have not seen inside this tin yet. Ooh, oh no. Oh, that doesn't smell good. Kind of has a corned beef sort of smell to it. Oh. Oh. What is that? I mean, there's a vaguely meat-like aroma. Let me show you this. I don't think anything's going to spill out of it. There is the Spam. It's very pale, very gelatinous, and it smells gross. <sighs> What would I describe that as? It's, there's kind of a corned beef quality to it, like if you've ever had a corned beef sandwich. But something wrong, too. There's like a weird ashy sort of aroma. Dirt, maybe. Ugh, I don't know. I mean, I'm not the most squeamish person in the world. I could eat pretty much whatever and it wouldn't really bother me. I might not decide to seek that thing out and eat it. But I don't think I'm gonna gag or puke or anything if I eat this Spam, but Let's just see what happens. It makes a lot of wet noises. Okay. It's not as goo gooey as I thought it would be. Here is a fork full of Spam. Here we go. The Spam is here. It is on my fork. I'm going to taste it. That is one of the saltiest things I have ever put in my mouth in my entire life. 
the texture is gross. I can imagine maybe frying this, it would be a little bit better. And maybe it would get some of that salt out of it. I don't know. As it is, when it's cold and not cooked, not fried, not baked, not anything, the texture is just very unappealing. It almost has a kind of a, like a tuna flavor to it in a weird way. Maybe that's just the sodium and the fact that it's in a can. Oh my God, it is so salty. I could imagine like making a tuna fish or tuna salad, you know, putting mayo and mustard and a can of tuna fish, mixing it together. I can imagine doing this with the Spam. And it seems like it would taste sort of similar. Yeah, it definitely has kind of a tuna-y sort of flavor to it. I'm not really tasting pork, which is int interesting. Yeah, oh, that's weird, because it says salted pork with ham, but pork is ham. What does that mean? Does the pork part mean, like, organs or something? I mean, if I, if I were stranded on a deserted island and a crate of Spam washed up, I'm sure I'd be fine eating this as my main source of protein. Well, I don't know if I'd be fine. I would probably die eventually from the sodium and the fat. But if I had to survive for a couple months on the Spam, I think I'd be fine. It might look like I'm actually enjoying this now because I keep eating it, but I just want to really put my finger on the flavor. It's not, it's not gross. It's not make you gag gross. I can imagine a circumstance. I know that people would make like spam sandwiches where they'll, they'll cut off slices and fry them up. I could imagine that being okay. I, Unless I had grown up eating it, though, I don't think there would ever be a world in which I would go, mm, you know what I really am in the mood for? A Spam sandwich. I've tried it now. It's not good, but it's not make you throw up disgusting. You should put that in the next commercial for Spam. Try to get that flavor out of the old mouth. Well, there you go, gang. <laughs> now it's time for hashtag ask stuff and things. Remember, if you have a question for me and you would like it answered on the Sunday stuff and things, things tweet. What do they call it now? Is it still tweeting? X, X me at SAT Bradley on Twitter slash X. Or if you are a Patreon supporter, you can write to me via Patreon and go right to the front of the line. If you are Feeling generous, you can hit that super thanks button under this video right now, go right to the front of the line, or you can leave me comments, questions, and feedback under my YouTube videos. This week, we have a super thanks from our good friend at MDB831, who says simply, thanks. Well, thank you, MDB831. We have a question from at Bowmana, who says, hey, I have a couple questions for you and a comment. First off, thanks for the advice for deep cleaning my... <coughs> Still the spam coming up. For deep cleaning my Lamy Safari, I'll have to try a pipette and or syringe. Remember, I meant like a bulb syringe, like those blue things that people shove in baby's ears. That's what I was talking about. Second, have you ever thought about doing a video on your coffee routine? I think I've already done that. I'm pretty sure I did a Sunday, uh, Sunday video where I did that. I believe a majority of your viewers would enjoy that. Lastly, do you mostly S your P in your vehicle? If so, does it leave a long-lasting smell? Nick B. from North Carolina. Uh, yeah, I am mostly in my vehicle when I'm essing my pee, or often outside. But yeah, I mean, yeah, it'll smell like a pipe. <laughs> if you smoke your pipe in your car, it'll smell like that. It's not the same as like stale cigarette smoke though, so I don't consider it as bad. And it does seem to go away more quickly than something like cigarette smoke. Next, we have some feedback from last week's Sunday Stuff and Things. This is from at Tom Brown, 1898. Bradley, good for you. Stick with the American pronunciation of Latakia. I'm a daily listener to National Public Radio, and it's more than jarring to hear some guy from, say, Buffalo, New York, suddenly pronounce the capital of some obscure count country as though he grew up there. 
Anyway, I agree with you on the tin versus bulk debate, and despite the common belief that you can rehydrate tea, you cannot. It might be moisture, moisture, but it won't be the same. That's a weird word to say, because you want to say moisture, but it's moisture. Uh, good show today. Yeah, I, I remember when I was a kid, there was some Saturday, Saturday Night Live skit. I can't remember the circumstances. It was a long time ago when I was young, but basically it had all these people in media pronouncing words like they'd be going, oh, did you hear the story in Costa Rica? And they would pronounce foreign place names like that, sort of making fun of that tendency in some news anchors to overpronounce foreign place names. And although I appreciate when people are aware of how things are properly uh, pronounced in their native language or in their native land, uh, I think it sounds a little weird when you're speaking in an American accent and then suddenly you launch into whatever foreign accent that you are trying to, it's just kind of weird. Anyway, at Situation Zero says, another downside of bulk, so we were talking about tinned blends versus bulk blends, is that for mixtures you may be getting the bottom of the retailer's stock, and this may change the ratio of components. For example, in an English blend, the Latakia pieces are typically larger and heavier, so they will drop to the bottom of the container or bag. When they go to fill your order, you may be getting a different proportion of various components than the recipe calls for. Sometimes I get what looks like floor sweepings. Obviously, for flakes, this is not an issue, and I regularly order bulk flakes. So a lot of people weighed in on bulk versus tin, and a lot of people preferred tin blends or tinned blends. We did have some people uh, supporting bulk as well, but a lot of the comments that I'm going to be reading out here were on the tin side of the scale. This is from at Dan slash G1979. I've bought both bulk and tins. I prefer tins also. Not just flavor and consistency, but also to me it's about enjoying the full experience. The tin and art are part of that to me. And I agree with that too. I enjoy having the actual physical tin. I personally can't stand the round tins for flakes or the sharp edge cat food cans for many US blends. I don't know how much money it saves, but I would pay a few cents more for, de for a decent tin. I would love to see printed lids like days of old too. Yeah, I think, I mean, way back in the day, they were like painted almost. Um, this is from at KY Bullet. I only buy bulk. No way I'm spending 12 to $15 for a one and a half ounces. My room looks like a mason jar factory. So yeah, the cost is definitely a huge part of the bulk versus tin debate. Then we did the video about my beautiful little Nikon FE. Oh. So satisfying. Some people said, Ugh. things, things, they left things in the comments to tell me about. This is from at MDB831, Diamond is a Keeper, bro. I agree. At Seth Potter Photo says, I've been watching your channel for years for T and P stuff, and I'm so excited to see you getting into photography. I've been into photography for a long time, but I will, I will definitely be putting more photography content. Now, obviously, we we kind of do an every other week sort of thing with a pipe-related thing and then a non-pipe-related thing. I'm still going to be keeping that up, but some of the non-pipe-related stuff will be photography just because that's kind of the thing I'm into. You may have noticed that I go through these phases where my interests will wax and wane about certain things. I'm definitely in a very photography-focused era right now as far as my hobbies go. Um, at Jericho297 says, can't go wrong with an old Nikon. I use my Nikon F, which was made from 1959 until the early 70s. Mine was a 64. A lot of Nikon's, a lot of Nikon's film SLR cameras were top of the line. Yeah, so the FE, there was the F, which was their main pro body, then the F2, which was the successor main pro body. This came out during the F2 era, or when the F2 was still out, but it it overlapped the F3. So the F, the main F cameras were their pro bodies. This was like their semi-pro body. So the FM, so the FE and FM were out at around the same time. Then the FE2, FM2, FM2, 3A, I don't know. There's a bunch of different ones that had this exact same body, but just slightly different as far as the internals. But this lasted for a long time, this body style, and it's just a beautiful little camera. Love it. We have at Rubber Ring says, seeing that Nikon brought back good memories, my first, oh, that's a good example, Nikon in Japan would be pronounced Nikko, but I'm not going to say Nikko because that would sound weird. My first SLR was a Nikon EM, which looks almost identical to yours. Yeah, and I think the EM was, 
it wasn't the same body. It looked similar, but it was kind of their consumer version. This was like prosumer, and then the F bodies were the pro versions. Um, got it passed down from my older brother, who probably bought it secondhand himself. I think I must have been 14 or 15 years old. I joined a local photography club merely so I could use their darkroom. I used to buy film in bulk, four or five units at a time, which you had to feed into empty cassettes in total darkness. Yeah, I know they still sell like 100 foot rolls of some of the popular Kodak films. Developing my own films, making prints. To me, the work in the darkroom was half the fun of photography. You were going to have so much fun with that camera. Thank you, at Rubber Ring. And yeah, I did a lot of research to see if there was any sort of local photography club or a local kind of community darkroom. Nothing. Nothing here whatsoever. There's no, there's not even a good camera store. There is a camera store here, but it doesn't have any cameras in it. They do film developing, but they're always like four weeks out. It's just, there's not really anything here. And considering this is a very, I don't know, it, it's the Pacific Northwest, it's near Seattle, it's a college town, there are a ton of hipsters here. You would think that there would be some sort of film photography community going on here. Nothing, nothing at all. Kind of annoying. Um, at Schnary Dog says, very nice. Still have a Canon AE-1 that I received as a high school graduation gift in 1986. Was never a great photographer, but every once in a while I get the urge to take it out and give it another try. Have fun. And then finally, at UK Pipe and Cigar says, that's probably the best Nikon manual focus camera and the best wide angle lens to boot. The M90 feature is a lifesaver. If the battery dies, it saved my bacon twice on holidays. So that's, you can do a uh, manual uh, 1 over 90 shutter if your battery dies. It won't get into all the details. Just get any Nikon 50 millimeter manual focus lens and you'll have a perfect kit. Yeah, so I have the 28 millimeter AIS, Nikkor AIS 2.8 on here. And then I was looking into getting the little 50 millimeter pancake 1.8. And that would probably be all I would need for this unless I wanted to get something mildly telephoto. But anyway, super happy with this camera. I have already sent away two rolls of film. So once I get those rolls back, I'll probably do a video showing you how horrible they look because I'm sure they're not going to look great. I'm sure I'm going to be missing focus a lot. It's probably going to take a while for me to get good at using that camera. But thank you so much for all the feedback, gang. Please keep it coming in. It really helps make the show go. But now it's time for the very best part of the show, and that is where we thank our Patreon supporters. Remember, if you would like to support the channels on Patreon, there is a link in the description box below, and it is much appreciated. It helps pay for the fancy camera that is filming this video, the lights that are shining upon me, blends and other products for review and every week we like to shout out those who support the channels at $25 or more a month. People like Glenn Dunnington, Jason Buckner, David Godrew, Ryan McFadden, Arcturus, Ashes of the Phoenix, and Jonathan Proctor. You could consider these people producers of the Stuff and Things content. And then of course the executive producers, the maniacs, People like Bob McGee, who support the channels at $100 a month. And we'll never forget our Hall of Fame member and dearly departed friend, Peter Straub. Gang, thank you so much for watching. Please stay tuned for the first impressions video for Capstan Gold Ready Rubbed, not Ready Rubbed, Flake Cut, Navy Cut, Capstan Gold Navy Cut is the name of this blend. Stay tuned for that. We will have the unboxing video for my custom NYX Pullman engineer boots. Very excited about that. The full review of Capstan Gold. More stuff about photography, film photography, digital photography, lots of photography stuff, maybe some music stuff coming in there too. And then of course working. Currently we have working episode 22 out about stripping a large foundation. And then we'll have episode 23 out soon after that. Lots of good stuff coming up. But until next time, until we meet again, I'm your good friend Bradley Yumi, the Honor of the Stuff and Things, on a very pleasant Sunday Stuff and Things. I'll see you later. Spam. Blah, blah.